creating different moods and light quality, different angles and vantage points. Hi Jane, I am fascinated to watch viewers in the gallery interact with the paintings. There is a critical moment where viewers become aware that color and space are dependent on their position and they start to do a sort of curious dance with the paintings, moving in and out and from one side to the other. Generally, one thinks of a painting existing between the spatial extremes of describing either a flat surface or a hole in the wall but these works include the space between their surface and the viewer. In a sense, there is no one correct version of what one of these paintings looks like. There are as many versions as there are possible combinations of light and viewing position. Richard Dear Richard, That's what I had hoped for in terms of the constantly shifting bodily relationship that the viewer can have with the paintings. I also hope that some people take time to be physically still with the paintings and let their eyes take in the movement within the painted surface and around the edge of the elliptical motifs. For this too reveals contradictory spatial relationships, inversions and counterpoints resulting in a sort of restlessness within a framework that is ordered and methodical. Do you remember my mentioning my trip to visit the Royal Gardens of Japan over 20 years ago now, and my fascination with experiencing gardens of sitting down type and gardens of walking around type? The first meant to be contemplated from one viewing terrace, and the second a series of discoveries of vistas from viewing points along the winding path. From that time I have always kept these concepts with me in the making of my paintings, wanting to see if I can successfully combine them to offer both types of experience to the viewer. The continuous brushwork that edges each inner shape acts as a sort of go-between. On the one hand it marks the border in an even width outline, emphasizing the flatness of each shape, giving a sort of cartoonish quality to the motifs. But at the same time, again, because of the variable reflectivity, the scalloped outline appears to come and go in a tantalizing way, throwing each form into three-dimensional relief. Jane Hi Jane. It is strange that your paintings, which at first glance seem so resolved, ask so many questions on repeated viewing. The obsessive control of form and surface, instead of creating any sense of calm or stability, induces restlessness and mild disorientation. The way the paint is applied is critical in bringing together form and color. Richard Dear Richard, it is important that the paint is applied in regular brush marks over the canvas and built up in a number of layers. It is a methodical and repetitive process which gives the surface a density and physicality. However, because of the variable way the light falls on the surface and because the viewer's position changes, the colored areas can sometimes be seen as flat, uniform fields, while at other times a surface fragmented back into discrete, separate units. There are positions from which these two states can be seen simultaneously, creating an interplay of tactile and optical qualities. I think this is when the mild disorientation occurs, matched by a strong visual and sensual pleasure. Jane Hi Jane, now that the show has been on view for several weeks, I have observed that the light, both artificial and natural, is not at all passive, but actively part of the viewing experience. Richard Hi Richard, yes, that is exactly what I had hoped for. I think we managed to achieve a really good balance between the natural and artificial lighting during the installation. I am pleased at how the light works on the edges of the paintings, particularly in flighty, 
where the daylight from the adjacent windows gives the left edge of the painting an illusion of the same color as the internal motif. This was quite disconcerting to me when I first saw it. Almost unbelievable that it could be so.